Hey everybody, it is a rainy day here in Posa, Michigan. Perfect time for me to catch up on my planting because if you've noticed, anytime I go anywhere, I tend to have plants follow me home. So I've got tons of stray plants all over the place. Time to get them in pots because a lot of them are gonna get pretty exhausted sitting in these little tiny nursery cups. So time for me to get these in here. So let me start right here with this one. Uh, every year I get myself a king tuck grass and I put it on the deck and this is an incredible plant because it gets so large. It definitely gets at least six feet tall. Uh, these kind of palms up at the top get nice and big and it definitely will give kind of that corner of the deck a bit of a tropical feel. It's really, it's, it's just really interesting it, and it behaves differently than other grasses and it's a, a Egyptian uh, papyrus grass, which is that kind of grass that you read about in school when they talked about how the Egyptians made paper. It was made from this type of grass. And every year I put it in a pot with something else. And every year this thing just takes over and it's really happening at the root level. So usually at about this week number six, I end up with whatever I plant it with just starts looking kind of poor. I mean, it, it doesn't kill it, but you can tell that it's the roots of this papyrus grass that is basically overtaking whatever I do and just stealing a lot of the nutrients and a lot of the water. Uh, so this year I'm putting it in a little bit bigger container. I'm hoping that'll help. And then I'm also putting it with a really vigorous plant. So this is the Color Rush Red Petunia. And this would be right on par with the Supertunia Vista, which is the most vigorous type of Supertunia that's out there. And uh, uh, one thing that's interesting about this one, though, is that uh, like Supertunia Vista doesn't have a red, but Color Rush does. So I'm curious to see how it does. I have to admit, though, this red is not the brightest red. It's a little bit dull, a little bit of a dingier color to it. Still attractive, but definitely not not that intensity that I get like off of this one here. This is the Surfinia Deep Red. Um, definitely, I think you can hopefully on camera, see the difference. Uh, and when it comes to like the Supertunia, because there are the smaller Supertunias available in Really Red and the um, uh, cherry, Black Cherry or something like that is the name of it. Those are nice reds. Uh, this one I'm gonna say is a very average red, but I will say that when it comes to the amount of flowers and its flower coverage so far, it's doing really great, especially because it was just in that little tiny cup. I mean, this is not even a quart. And this thing got, you know, it's what, eight inches tall almost. And I do think that as it goes, it's gonna to start to spread out. The other super vigorous variety out there would be some of the waves. Uh, regular waves get really, really big. Easy waves are a little more in line maybe with that super tunia size. They do have a tidal wave, but I put it in containers before. I didn't like it. I think it's more of a landscape variety. It gets kind of leggy. I shouldn't say leggy because it's it's very full, but it gets these octopus arms that come out that eh, didn't look quite as nice. Whereas like Color Rush, Super Tunia Vista, all those tend to stay in a nice habit and they keep kind of a nice mounding habit. So I like those a little better. That's just my choice. Next one, I am going to put in this geranium that I picked up. So this one is called Starfield or white. No, this one is called starry pure white and it just has a very different flower from some of the other ones now it's in this little container and i did notice the stems a little weak i'm hoping that that'll get a little stronger over time uh, it's not too bad but you know it kind of wobbles a little and i always get nervous that that's going to be a problem then i also have one more of these uh biden's left this is the goldilocks rocks and biden's have been around for a long time but this variety Look at the flower on that. That's absolutely huge, much larger than a lot of the other varieties. It's almost, it's like a semi-double, I'd say, as well. And so just kind of a very interesting one. So I want to put that one in the front. And Biden's, who look at the roots on these. I mean, really uh, dense roots on it. They can be quite vigorous. So sometimes you got to watch out with the Biden's, like what you put it with, because it can really be a spreader. And then I'm going to be putting it in with two different um, ageratums. So this is the... Uh, variety from proven winners called artist blue this one is called bumble blue and already i can see a little bit of a difference so this one here the flowers are a little bigger a little more puffballish. these are a little tighter but the habit seems to be tighter and kind of more clustered whereas this is in little groupings so far but that could all change very quickly once i get these into the pot and they start to root so it'll be interesting to see how those go so i'm going to make sure that i put my tag for my Bumble Blue over here so that in the future, I don't get confused as to which one I'm dealing with. So let's see, I'm gonna put that like that. Oh yeah, that's gonna look great. Now, I'm not sure if this container is the right size. I maybe should have gone a little bigger because although, I mean, these kind of, they're, 
they don't get super huge, but they might do a little better if they got a little bigger, but I'm going to just roll with it. And then, like I said, this geranium, because it's a little floppy, I'm not sure which direction I want to put it in. I think I might put it so that it's flopping inward. Otherwise, it could flop out towards the outside. And if it does that, uh, then it might weaken it even more. And I really don't want to do that. So I I'll have to tuck in a little bit more soil in here, but otherwise doing pretty good. So let me get these kind of moved out of the way. So for this one, I've got two coleus in here, and these are both from the new downtown series. So this is from the same grower who puts out the the uh, Main Street series, which is a series I absolutely love, uh, but those are really vigorous. These are a little bit more compact, so they're still quite large, but they don't get quite as big as the Main Street series, which might actually be an advantage for some of these containers because late in the season the the main street series those get really huge so this one here is called i better look at it here downtown miami magic and i really like how it has a little bit of this blonde leaf with a beautiful purple vein and then that nice kind of green edge on it very very attractive very kind of uh, a different uh, unusual color i got a, it's got good brightness for something that you know isn't trying to be like a bright yellow or isn't like a you know fuchsia or something like that and then i'm putting it here with the glimmer double impatient and uh, i'm testing this i have another container that has the rockapoco apple blossom uh double impatient so i want to see how the two do one thing one downfall of double impatience is that the spent flowers do sometimes get a little mushy i'm going to say uh, if they don't get blown off by the wind and so it does help to kind of clean them up and get them out of the way uh just because and they they do sometimes like this one is the burgundy color the darker the color on these the more they kind of change color so the burgundy flower ends up getting almost like a purple color after it's spent uh, so you, sometimes you have to pay attention to that because if those flowers land on the leaves of certain other flowers, like maybe on a begonia or something else, uh, they could kind of cause it to get moldy or rot or something like that. So that is, I'm still going to keep the double impatience in the easy to grow category, but like I'll put a little asterisk by it and kind of say, except that the flowers can be a little bit messy at times. So three down, three to go. Let's move on to the next ones. Okay, so maybe I don't just have three, I actually have four, but this one doesn't count because I'm just transplanting uh, this hibiscus into this container. And this is just a little trick that I use that I find very useful. I basically bury the pot in the center and then I pack the soil around it. And I find then when I take it out, it's much easier to get it in there without disturbing the plant too much. Uh, so then what I'll do is I'll just kind of flip this out. Yeah, here we go. And then that's all I have to do is drop this in. And usually, if I measured correctly, it's like an exact fit. Now, this uh, hibiscus I had gotten over a month ago, and it's been flowering ever since. Right now, all the flowers had kind of finished, and there's a whole bunch of buds coming. And I took that as a sign that it was telling me, like, okay, it's time to get me in a bigger pot. So I'm listening, and I'm going to take good care of you, I promise, and I hope you like your new home. Uh, so this has been a beautiful one as far as the colors go, so I'm thrilled with this one. The next up, I guess I'll do this one, and this one isn't actually one that I bought. This is one that I started from seed. So these are some of the Figaro dahlias that I had uh, grown from seed, and with the Figaro mix, you don't know what you're going to get. I ended up getting this color, which is absolutely stunning. I'm almost tempted to bag the flower heads so that I can get seeds from it because you can't let it cross pollinate. Uh, but, you know, I probably won't get around to that, but I dream about doing it. Uh, and then these here are the uh, passion fruit lantana. This variety, we only pinched once. You probably could have benefited from a second pinch, but I am noticing like on this one, it's starting, you know, this branch is starting to cross over. So this is one of the first trailing type of lantana. So I'm very excited about this one and I wanted to use it in a pot. Again, I think if I would have pinched it one more time, it would have even been more bushy, but it seems like it's going to start doing its thing. It's not flowering right now, but uh, it's a very interesting color. You know, what? I'm going to just do my same little technique. I'm going to push this down. That way I know once I get it in there, it's the height that I want it to be. I think that's going to be pretty good. And now let's pop this out, get it in there. Oh boy, there's lots of roots in here, I will say that. So it's a happy plant. 
And you're going to be even happier now, I think. Okay, so that's in there. Now I'm going to just tuck in the lantan lantana on each side. We'll see how this works. And I'm curious, I don't know how the colors are going to look together. They seem to kind of share a bit of a color palette, but I'm not sure if they're going to look fantastic together or if it's going to be one of those things where when you see them together, you kind of go, hmm, it's close, but not quite. Uh, we'll wait and see. So I'm just going to get these in. I'm going to let it go over the edge. Again, I should decide if I'm going to... Uh, trim these or not. And this lantana is in need of some fertilizer. I'm looking at the leaves and I notice that there's uh, kind of some variation in the green. So there's a little bit, some of the leaves are a little lighter green and some of them are a darker green. That usually means it just wants fertilizer. So again, I keep pulling plants out of the back area that, you know, they're kind of the plants that we've abandoned or we were waiting for, you know, they were being saved for some reason or another. Some of them were backups for online orders and things like that. So, uh, so some of these plants are, you know, a little bit neglected because uh, once we're, you know, we don't necessarily need them, we're focusing on the ones that are in the sales area. So I'm just pushing these in. We'll see how this one does. I, I just want to see how these plants grow. So it's just my little, little trial, but I love the color of that dahlia. It's absolutely gorgeous. So now we're going to do this one. So of course, right here in the center is this beautiful, Kind of Martha Washington style geranium. The name of it is Aristo Black Velvet, and it is stunning. This is an amazing color. I've never seen a geranium that dark before, and I'm I'm a fan. It's it's really nice. It's been blooming nonstop too, and I've had that one for what about a month now. So I'm thrilled to know that you know it's not one of those that just peters out really quick. I see lots more buds coming as well. So. It's kind of nice. And then what I do here, hope it came right out for me. I'm going to just pull off. There's some bad leaves down at the bottom. So I'm going to pluck those now. The plant doesn't, doesn't need leaves that aren't doing any work for it. And then get that out of there. And looks like I need to move it back a little bit because I'm trying to put it with two other plants, which I might regret later. But again, this is in the experimenting time. This is why I have a lot of confidence with some of the plants that I tell you like, hey, you don't need more than one uh, because I've tried them and given them a go. So this one here is the Vancouver Centennial Geranium. So another geranium in here. This one really is about this foliage. It's unbelievable. It almost glows with that lime edge on it. And it does get a little bit of an orange flower, which is attractive, but it's kind of considered insignificant. This leaf almost looks like it's a hookera or something like that. It's just a very, very nice one. It gets a decent size too. It just turns into this little mound, a mound that looks a lot like a hookera actually. Uh, so I'm, I'm a fan of this one. I'll definitely be doing this one again. And then this one here is the Amazon Sunset Parrot's Beak. And my sister said, oh, I recognize that plant. She said it's supposed to flower, but she said never flowered for us, which explains why on the tag, uh, Proven Winners did not put the flower on it because apparently it's one that isn't necessarily, it can flower, but it doesn't always flower. I don't know the story on it. You know, these, you no, know, those roots are pretty good too. So I'm not gonna fuss with those. Just gonna get them in the soil. Uh, I'm just, I don't, I've never grown this one myself. Like I said, my sister was familiar with it, but I was not. So I wanted to give it a go. I'm gonna tuck it in. I'll add some more soil afterwards. But I thought this just might be a nice little combination to try out. Uh, and I just really wanted to see how this geranium did for the rest of the season. And now we got to move on to this big one over here. Okay, so I've got all kinds of stuff going on. This is my kind of catch-all for things that are kind of pink is what it comes down to. So I did want to make sure and use this um, mantra pink geranium. It's absolutely stunning. I'm so impressed with it. Now this flower is almost spent, so I'm going to pop that off. But it has that nice dark foliage, fantastic flowers on it. I love the color. And then I also have this Aromance Mulberry Nemesia or Nemesia. And this is one people rave about because a lot of times the Nemesias, uh, they didn't necessarily hold up throughout the summer. So I'll be curious to see. They say this one does. It does have a fragrance. It's kind of it smells smells like grass, kind of. I don't know. People say it has more of a flavor. Maybe it gets more of a, a fragrance or maybe at different times. Uh, unfortunately, I had knocked it into a plant, so they don't normally bow like this. So those I'll have to trim off. And then I did get a Daybreak Charm uh, Petunia. Daybreaks are kind of the small, or Super Petunia Daybreak. These are the small 
uh, super tunias. I just wanted to just test this one out to, I don't, I haven't grown that one either. So that one's been around for a while, but I hadn't grown it. And then I have this trailing coleus, it's called Road Trip. And oh, it's definitely, it definitely wants to get out of this itty bitty pot. Oh boy. So this one I would consider to be a little bit root bound. And usually when something is this root bound, I do break up the roots on it. You notice I don't normally do it, but actually it's not too bad. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely is going to need some help getting, Oh, I don't know. Well, if it doesn't do well, we'll know it's because I broke up the root ball. Uh, so I'm just going to pop these over to the edge here and get that in there. And then I also have this other coleus. It's a stained glassworks luminance. Uh, so just an interesting pink color. This is going to be in a part sun area. And I think all of these can take part sun. In fact, this one, can it take full sun? It looks like it can take full sun. So this, I could keep this all in a full sun area. This petunia is going to do best in full sun. So maybe I will keep it in a full sun area. But I do love the flower on this. It's nice and bright. Uh, let's see. I better go with my bigger item first because I'm going to get confused if I try to just measure these out by eye. So this one came in a really large pot. Makes me realize uh, why I started noticing a lot of the big box stores are starting to offer certain plants in that. They call it a gallon size. It's a trade gallon. It's like an eight inch pot. Um, because the plants do get bigger, some of them do anyway, although I'm surprised sometimes when I see like lobelia in that size because the lobelia doesn't necessarily get much larger. So I'm going to do a coleus on both sides of this one and I'm just going to put them where they fit. I might be putting too many plants in here, uh, but again, this will be my little experiment just to see who wins. In fact, the more I look at this, the more I think that I might have overdone it with the number. Uh, I think to a lot of other people, this would be the perfect number. This is exactly how many they do. But you know me, I tend to uh, put fewer plants and just work on making them get bigger rather than putting a whole bunch of them and having them get stunted a little bit. So I'm going to just snip off some of these broken ones because I do know with Nemesia or Nemesia, if you trim them, they do come back usually. Uh, but again, the other, a lot of varieties of Nemesia don't do well through the summer heat. So this one is supposed to be able to keep blooming right through like pretty much the whole season, right till the frost. So we'll see how it does. It's going to be interesting to, to test it out. Okay. I think, oops, what's this one doing? Okay. Let's get this in here. And wow, this is already looking pretty packed. So who knows? I might've overdone it. Uh, but hey, I can't get it right every time, right? So, okay, so that's seven whole pots today. That's a little bit extra, shall we say. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me kind of work with these. I'm These colors all work pretty well together, so that's nice to see. Um, I know this coleus gets really quite vigorous, so that's going to go way over the edge. This one here is not a trailing variety. It's a little bit more upright, so we'll see how they work. Kind of have a flower falling in there but this flower will be done in a little while anyway so ah there we go thank you guys for watching thank you guys for all your comments as well and I, a lot of people are commenting on some of my petunia videos and saying like hey you're giving me the confidence to do petunias again thank you very much good luck with all of these annuals including petunias remember they need a good amount of sunlight or the proper amount of sunlight so look at your tags make sure you're giving them water when they need it so you're keeping them consistently moist so you're not overwatering. you don't want soup and sludge in there uh, but you also don't want them to dry down completely and make sure you're fertilizing and the fertilizer that i tend to use is like a water soluble fertilizer once a week miracle grow is one this year i've been trying that beat your neighbor fertilizer uh, there's also proven winners makes a really good one and jacks as well so those are the the most popular ones are the ones that are easiest for you to get so remember once a week with that i probably will also drop in just some pellets of an osmocote time release or one of the time release varieties ours is a 14 14 14 but you can use a 10 10 10 that'll be fine uh, i think 10 10 10 is more commonly available so Go for that and you'll be very pleased with the results if you can manage that water and sun and fertilizer. That's like the trifecta. If you can make that work, you can have fantastic containers.